have another Ask Nikki for you guys. As you guys know, this is one of my favorite series here on my channel. It allows me to kind of connect with you guys in a different way and talk to you guys about different situations that you are facing in your personal life that you would like some feedback on. If you guys are new to my channel and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I have a series here on my channel called Ask Nikki, which is exactly what it sounds like. If you guys are having any issues or anything going on in your life that you may need some advice on, you can email me at asknikki at yahoo.com with your question and you will have the chance to be featured on one of these videos where I will give you my personal advice. But not only that, you can also get the advice of your fellow Glamazons down in the comments below. And these videos have been extremely successful and we all help each other out. And it just warms my heart to see all of us come together and help out our fellow Glamazons, okay? So I'm super excited to jump right into this. This is one of my favorite series here on my channel because I get to just chill and talk to my besties and talk to my friends because this right here is exactly what I do with my best friend. We'll come together and girl, I'll be talking for hours, okay? So before we jump into this Ask Nikki, I just wanted to touch base on something because I know that a lot of you guys feel like I don't answer your questions or I'm not paying attention or I'm not responding and here's the thing and I'm going to be really honest with y'all because I do see myself as y'all's sister, as y'all's family and I'm not about to blow smoke up your ass and sit here and like, you know, be fake with y'all. Um, there are a lot of emails that I kind of overlook, not because I don't believe that they're important. I don't believe that I can give imperative, helpful advice on your particular situation and here's why. I would say about 75 to 80% of the emails that I'm receiving are from young women that are in the grades between 5th in eighth grade okay and they will email me about some really serious shit about how to get the attention of the boy that they have a crush on about how to get you know some guy's attention that doesn't even know they exist and to be honest with you as your big sister I am not about to give you advice and be like, okay, yeah, how about you not focus on your studies and focus on this snot-nosed kid? Like, I'm not going to tell you that, and I know that that's not something that you necessarily want to hear, but honestly, love, at that point in your life, nothing else should matter to you but you, because I will say it again and again and again and again, more than half of the guys that you come into contact with, especially in middle school, and in high school ain't gonna mean shit five years down the line. So I'm gonna tell you right now, to all of my younger Glamazons that are having issues with a seventh grade boy, an eighth grade boy, you know, any boy that just don't have their shit together, y'all still in school, um, let me tell you something, they are not worth your time and they're definitely not worth you stressing out about. Take a step back and really ask yourself, is this person really going to benefit my life? Is this person really going to make me a better person? Is this person really going to be worth my time? Because if there's anything that I've learned is that time is something that we will never get back and I know that we hear that all the time but it's honestly so true. So please be careful with who you are investing your time, energy, love, and affection into because you don't want to invest into something or somebody that you're not gonna get a return from, if that makes sense. So if you are one of my younger Glamazons and you are struggling with a crush or you wanna know how to get this boy's attention, my only general advice for you is number one, you shouldn't have to work that hard to get his attention. If he likes you, he likes you. If he wants to respect you and like you and hang out with you, that will happen on its own. But never, ever, ever conform yourself to try to make him notice you. Don't ever work too hard to make some boy notice you. It doesn't matter how cute they are, how good they are, at sports it doesn't matter about all that I know that it seems like it matters more than anything in the world right now but let me tell you something those boys are not gonna get you into college those boys are not gonna help you graduate those boys ain't gonna be responsible for your grades those boys are not going to help you in your life and your journey of you being successful that's all I'm saying you want to have a crush that's cool but don't get so stressed out I get so many emails of these young women Women, these young beautiful women that aren't even out of middle school that are so stressed out like honestly you have your whole life to be stressed out about boys just take a minute 
breathe, eat you a fruit roll up, work on your homework, make sure that you're ending out this year strong girl, make sure your grades are looking right because that's the most important thing. So that's all I'm going to say. It's not because I don't believe that your situation isn't important. It's just I want you to focus on the right thing and I wouldn't be a good big sister if I gave you any other advice. So I just wanted to put that out as a disclaimer because I hear a lot of my really younger glamazons, you know, coming at me sideways like, oh, you never answer, you don't have nothing to say, you just ignore us. And it's not that, it's just like, what do you want me to say? Like, honestly, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to sit here and tell you, yeah, don't worry about your schoolwork, don't worry about your family, don't worry about your future. You look at that little boy right there that may not be there a year or two from now. Hell, he may not be here six months from now because little boys are flaky as fuck, okay? That's just how it is. They don't even care for themselves right. They don't even wipe their ass right. And just because they're cute doesn't mean that you have to stop your whole life for them. So I'm not going to give you that advice. I'm so sorry. As usual, before we get into today's Ask Nikki, today's glamour shot of the day is my beautiful Glamazon Beatrice. You look so good, so amazing. And I really love your hair color, girl. Like, it is perfect for the summer. You got it all going on. Thank you so much, Beatrice, for sending me your gorgeous glamour shot. It means the world to me. You guys know that I would not be here without you, and I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get into this Ask Nikki. I'm going to be eating my hot cheeto popcorn okay i'm gonna be munching on some of these during this video i hope you guys don't mind but i honestly i want this to be as real as possible and to be real with y'all when i meet with my best friend and we start talking about shit like this we'd be grubbing and drinking and stuff so it's not gonna be any different with y'all because you guys are my best fucking friends okay of course i have my drink it's in a solo cup because i'm classy as fuck i have a margarita mix in this with some tequila so it's basically a margarita um it's not anything fancy so this is what i'm going to be sipping on throughout this video as well so it is raining again but it's not just raining it's fucking freezing i am so cold all the time and I can't have my heater on while I'm filming because my microphone will just pick up that fucking noise so I have to have everything off so I'm like I'm fucking freezing <laughs> Okay, so this next email is from my Glamazon, Nikki. Hey, Nikki, what's up, girl? Hey, Nikki. Our subject line is, my sister is breaking my heart. Please help. Girl, let's see what ha happened. Hi, Nikki. My name is actually Nikki, too. And before I tell you what I need advice on, I just wanted to say you're amazing. And you're honestly the only person on YouTube I can sit down and watch for long periods of time. I love you so much. And you're like truly an inspiration and a role model. I wanted to email you because I wanted to get advice from someone wiser. Thank you so much. Like when you guys let me know that you take time out of your days to watch my videos and like binge watch them, it really just does something to my heart and I can't even explain it to you and I don't get this feeling from anybody else but you guys so I just want to express how grateful I am and I never want you guys to go a day without understanding how important you guys are to me thank you so much for always coming back and supporting me and watching my crazy ass videos <laughs> so last year I kissed someone I wasn't supposed to and I don't want to get into too much detail but trust me he and I were not supposed to be doing stuff, but as a stupid 16, almost 17 year old, I did it anyways. It wasn't anything nasty, by the way. Okay, we'll go with that, okay. I told my best friend about it because I thought I could trust her. For a whole year, she kept it a secret, basically two years because I'm 18 now. Two weeks ago on spring break, I was at her pool with my sister. My sister is really good friends with her too, and we tell each other everything. So whilst, girl, I love that word, yes, bitch, whilst, whilst, okay? Whilst we were all hanging out, the guy I secretly had a little thing with was brought up into the conversation. My sister didn't know what I had had with him because she was 12 at the time and I didn't want to freak her out. I had honestly forgotten about it, so I never told her. I went to the hot tub because I was cold for two minutes, Nikki. Two minutes, okay? Caps, all caps, two minutes, all right? I went into the hot tub for two minutes 
and somehow between that time my best friend told my sister everything. My sister was pissed at me because I hadn't told her, but I told my best friend. My sister ended up being so angry that she told my parents about it and they were angry because I had had a boy in our house without permission. My sister hasn't spoken to me since and it's been almost three weeks. My best friend has snitched on me before to my parents and I'm getting fed up with it. It wasn't her place to tell my sister, but I mean, she's my best friend, so I don't want to lose my friendship with her, but as of this moment, I can't trust her. I don't want to end things with my best friend, but she damaged my relationship with my sister. I'm so sorry this is so long, but I really need advice. What should I do? Moral of the story, this happened when you were 16, almost 17 years old. You are 18 years old now, okay? So this was like a year and a half ago. So you invite this boy to your house without your parents' permission, and you guys end up kissing. You swear up and down that nothing else nasty happened. So I'm going to trust you all now. I'm going to take your word, okay? You didn't tell your younger sister because at the time she was 12 and you didn't want her to freak out. So you kept a secret from her. But you did tell your best friend, which is pretty normal. We end up telling our best friends everything, right? Fast forward a few years and you're at spring break at the pool with both your sister and your best friend. You take off, you go to the hot tub by yourself. And within that time, your best friend spills all the motherfucking tea on your business to your sister, okay? So your sister got so pissed at you that she went home and she told your parents about something that happened over a year and a half ago. You want to know what you should do, who you should be mad at. Like now you're in trouble with your parents. Now your sister isn't talking to you. Okay, first of all, let's focus on your sister for a second, okay? Your sister, I feel like is overreacting in a sense because number one, this happened over a year and a half ago. Number two, this could have all been resolved with her just communicating with you and being like, bitch, you hurt my feelings. Like you're my sister. I thought we were best friends. Like how does your best friend know about this? And I'm your sister and you didn't tell me. But instead of doing that, she went to your parents because she's hurt with you and she's trying to get back at you for basically having a best friend outside of her. I think that your sister, especially being your little sister, she looks up to you and maybe she thought that you guys had a bond that was way stronger than the bond between you and your best friend. So whatever your best friend knows, she feels like she should know before that girl because that girl ain't family. So to her, she's pissed. I think that you need to have a conversation with your sister and I think that this is more of a deep rooted issue with her. I think that she felt betrayed. What she's feeling is betrayed trail from you because she was under the impression that her sister is her best friend and vice versa not some girl that's not a part of their family your best friend may be your best friend but your sister's best friend was you so i get why she probably was hurt because somebody outside of her family knew something about her sister that she didn't know and so i think that she was just like bitch like what the fuck like you're not even a part of our family ho like i should have known this about my sister and both of y'all fucking lied to me so she got pissed um i think that you should talk to your sister and open up the lines of communication with her and be like hey you and I are way too old for this shit. I'm already 18 years old. You need to get your shit together. If you have a problem with me, then you need to come to me as your sister. If I hurt your feelings because I told my best friend, I'm sorry. And like, let her know that it wasn't coming from a malicious place. You weren't trying to like withhold it from her. You need to let her know, dude, you were 12 years old when this happened. Number one, you're not gonna understand it. Number two, you probably would have been scared. And number three, you would have had the burden of carrying that secret and I was just trying to protect you. I don't think cutting off your best friend at this point is necessary but you do need to have a very stern conversation with her and let her know when I tell you something it is for that information is specifically for you not for you and your other friends and my sister and your parents and your auntie and everybody else it's not their business and it's not your business to be telling so let me find out that you're telling my business again and you and i won't be friends anymore it's one of my biggest pet peeves if you know something that i told you and another person doesn't know it is not your responsibility and it's not your motherfucking business for you to be relaying the message to them if i wanted them to know 
I would have told them. It is my business, bitch, so don't be doing that. Because now, my little sister is mad at me, she snitched me out, and it's all because of you. Have a conversation with both of them, girl, and let them know where you stand. Let your friend know that you don't appreciate her doing that, and let your sister know where you were coming from. That's what I would say, the best of luck to you, love, and yeah, just keep an eye on your best friend. If she keeps snitching you out, mm-mm-mm. Your best friend is supposed to be your ride or die, okay? The only time that it's okay to go to your parents is if you are in infinite extreme danger you are risking your life because you're trying to be dumb like then by all means go to the adults to save your life but not with some shit like this okay i'm just saying so that's what i have to say i hope that helped best of luck to you my love okay so the next email is from my glamazon monique hey monique her subject line is i feel trapped oh girl what the hell what is going on dear nikki i love you and i look up to you so much oh thank you my love i have no siblings and sadly no friends so i'm basically all alone I'm in a relationship with this guy I first dated in sixth grade. We broke up for two years, but started up again in our freshman year. I'm 19, we graduated high school together and all that, so we've been together about four, almost five years. The thing is, is that I'm honestly so confused on what I need to do for myself. I love this guy, he's never done anything wrong, such as cheating or anything of that nature, at least I don't think so. We have so much history together, have been through a shit ton, and have even made goals that we want to accomplish together as a couple, a team. It sounds perfect, right? But here it is. He makes me feel like I'm walking on eggshells with him. Because if I say or do one thing the slightest bit wrong, he gets so mad. He has to know where I am almost every minute of the day. I can't go anywhere if it's not with him. I still do without telling him, but which causes me so much anxiety onto if he will catch me because he has before and it didn't end well. And when we fight, he'll completely shut down, ignore me, and not want to talk about it or anything at all. He won't even try to listen to me when I talk and he will go on to make it seem like he's the victim and everything and like I'm the bad guy. He even goes as far as to bring up the past, mostly my mistakes, when I believe the past should be left in the past. I'm confused because while I do love him, I think I may be falling out of love with him at the same time. I don't know if I want to be with him, but at the same time I'm scared to be with him because I don't know what to do. I've never dated anybody else. He's been my first and I always thought he'd be my last too. And I can't imagine myself being happy with somebody else. I know you're in a relationship of five years and I don't know if it's normal to even be feeling like this. I can never find the strength to be able to leave him which causes me to feel stuck but at the same time I'm scared about if he will be the only one that got away. I know I'm all over the place with this, but that's me, girl. Please help me in any way you can. If there's any advice at all, you may have or tell me if I'm just tripping. Thank you so much. Love, Monique. All right, girl. Let's take a look into what's going on, okay? Now, I am seeing a lot of red flags because you're saying that he has to know where you are at all times that if you do anything without him knowing that he gets really upset and instead of wanting to talk to you about it he just shuts down and that to me is a red flag because you can't really create a future with somebody that's not willing to communicate with you um so here's what i have to say about this okay because I have been in a relationship for over five years. It'll be six years in August. And I know, you know, the ups and downs that come in relationships. But honestly, for me, I have certain things in my relationship that are completely off limits. And one of those things is David is not allowed to tell me what I can and cannot wear. He is not allowed to tell me who I can and can't hang out with. He cannot tell me when I can and can't hang out with my friends because at the end of the day, this boy is not my father. He is my boyfriend. Well, he's my fiance, okay? With that comes the same type of respect that I have for him. I I can't just do shit behind his back and be like well you ain't my daddy like you know there has to be a mutual respect and communication is always key now I would say talk to him and let him know how you're feeling your intentions why you're going out there and kind of reassure him at the same time how the fuck do you do that if every time you try to talk to him he shuts down now I understand that I understand that because David used to do that to me like back when we first met David is a very quiet 
like introvert so a lot of times when we first met the only coping mechanism that he had it was like a defense mechanism was he would shut down like he can he literally has the ability to shut down and zone you out like you could be talking and he legitimately cannot hear you and back when we first met I had to talk to him and tell him it is not fair for you to do that to me just because you have the ability to zone out doesn't mean that it's right for you to do that to me because I am a person I am somebody and I matter what I say matters how I feel matters and if you say all the time that you love me then that means that you need to respect me enough to listen to what the fuck I have to say because there's gonna come a day that I'm not gonna want to talk no more and when I don't want to talk that's a fuck problem because when I get silent that means your girl's about to piece the fuck out because I don't have no patience I am NOT about to keep going through this with you I will try for a few times I will do my due diligence and I will communicate with you but if you continue to block me out like that you're gonna catch me on the wrong motherfucking day and you're gonna block me out and when you finally lift up that wall my ass is gonna be gone so I suggest that you get on board and you start talking to me because I'm willing to hear you out I'm willing to hear your thoughts and your feelings because just just the way that I matter you matter and I want to know how you feel and if you feel any type of insecurity if you have any questions talk to me babe because a lot of times I can be the person to reassure you and that's all it is humans as humans we need to be reassured always it just makes us feel more secure it makes us feel like we're connecting with our partner and like we're on the same page we're a team homie like we got each other like yes bitch you know because at the end of the day the person that you spend the most time with is your partner especially if you live together you're creating a life with them David is my best friend in order to maintain our friendship and our love life we have to talk about everything even your most vulnerable shit you have to just let your wall down because there's no point in being in a relationship if you're still just going to be holding shit to yourself i can hold my shit to myself all by myself what is the point of having somebody in my life if i can't talk to them and they refuse to talk to me i might as well just be by myself i'm just saying you're also afraid to leave him because you don't think that you're gonna find anybody else and i don't know if you've seen some of my other ass nikki's but i went through and i asked siri how many men are in this world and it is an exponential number so trust me when i tell you he is not your end all and be all. I have to love myself more than I love David. I love David with all of my heart, but I have to love myself more than I love him because I matter and because my feelings matter and I will not have somebody talking to me crazy. I will not be with somebody that's not my teammate, that's not my best friend. What I'm not about to do is waste my time with somebody who doesn't even think that I'm worth hearing out. Like that's stupid, that's hurtful, that is not a nice thing to do to somebody. And if you continue to feel this way and you have been feeling this way, don't be scared, don't be afraid. It's, it's better to be by yourself and at least you know what you want to do, you can, than for you to be with somebody that's putting you in a box and doesn't want to see you do well. Fuck that shit. Your future and your life is your own, whether or not he's here. So what I would say, because I'm not about to tell you to go home and break up with him. I know how hard it is, but I've done it before. I have done it. I have been in your exact situation and it's very, very hard and it's very scary to walk away from what you know. It is very scary to walk away from your comfort and from things that are familiar to you. But you will not grow in this life. You will not reach your full potential until you love yourself more than you love that person and you do what it is that's going to make you happy and judging by this email girl you are not happy life is hard enough as it is you don't need somebody at your house making it even harder okay you need to be who you are because ain't nobody gonna look out for you girl but you and i hope everything works out love i hope you get every single desire of your heart all right my next email is from my girl bianca hi bianca her subject line is my mom has stage three breast cancer Ooh, this is gonna be a hard one. 
here's the thing I know that like a lot of youtubers come on YouTube and they say oh yeah you guys are my family I really care about you guys but like I can feel you guys through the phone like I know that that makes me sound really crazy but I've been this way since I was a little girl I'm very intuitive and I can feel it and just reading that like it's very heavy hi Nikki my name is Bianca I know you probably won't get this but here's my story Oh, I got it, babe. I got it. My mom in January was diagnosed with breast cancer and it was the day of her birthday. My mom is everything to me. Her first chemo treatment went well. It even shrank. Now this second chemo isn't doing anything. In fact, it's growing. I know you have struggled with cancer and I think you said your mom was sick. I'm 13 and the oldest out of my siblings. I want my mom to see me graduate, go to prom, be at my wedding and become a grandmother. I'm terrified that she will die. My mom is my friend and my soul and the most important person to me and an amazing mom. She has to go get her breast removed even though it's not time but they have to finish chemo after surgery which is not a good thing. Please tell me how I handle this. I'm scared that if something happens I won't be able to cope with life. I'm a happy, talkative, bubbly person, but when something bad happens, I become isolated. Every day, I put on a smile so no one sees my pain because I want to be strong for her and the people around me. By the way, love you. Oh my god, I'm having such a hard time. What the fuck? <laughs> this email really touched me because, like you said, yes, I've had my own run-in with cancer. I've been touched by cancer and that shit sucks. My mom is sick. Yeah, my mom does have cancer. Um, I don't really want to say what type it's her business and my mom is very private i was 15 as most of you guys know i was diagnosed with cancer and it took half of my left clavicle bone and it was a very scary terrifying feeling like there's nothing else that i can compare it to it is one of the most nightmarish experiences of my life and then I was about 16 almost 17 so not even like a full year had passed and I had like this little bump down here right and it was like right under here and like when I used to do this I could feel it and it was like a ball and I freaked the fuck out because it was like maybe a little over a year since my surgery when I was 15 and the doctors told me if you feel anything else if you feel around your body and you feel any sort of growth, you need to come in immediately. And I had felt that, right? And I didn't tell my mom because I was scared. I didn't want to be poked and picked on anymore. I didn't want any more MRI scans. I didn't want any more, any more needles. I didn't want any more surgery. I just, I was scared. So my dumbass, I left it there and never, ever, ever do that, ever. And I got scared and I told my mom. And my mom told me that I needed to go back to the hospital and you guys, I flipped my shit. I had a full on anxiety attack. Like I was like, no, I'm not going back. Every time I go there, they tell me something bad and I just don't want to. And it took me years, years, you guys, for me to even be able to walk into a hospital because just the smell, it just fucking brings back so many terrifying memories for me okay this actually ended up being a cyst and so they went in and took it out not cancerous thank god but it still took surgery for them to remove it okay fast forward a few years and i was 19 years old and i found out that my mom had cancer as most of you guys know my mom was a single mom and she is my best friend she is my everything and so I found out that she had cancer and at this time I'm a little bit stronger and I feel like you know what I've been through it it's fine everything is gonna be fine we got this the doctor said that my mom had this tumor growing for like years since I was like 17 she had it but she never knew because sometimes it just doesn't it doesn't reveal itself, you don't have any symptoms. So my mom had had this tumor for years and she didn't know. And so by the time she found out it was huge and it had consumed her entire kidney. So they had no choice, they had to remove her left kidney, which was so scary, right? And at the time I was the only one here. It was just me and David. I made a story time about the time that I met David. And one of the biggest things 
that made me fall in love with him was the fact that he was there, you know, after my mom's surgery and he stayed in the hospital with me because you guys, I would have been by myself, like all by myself because nobody, nobody was here. And that's my mom. I completely understand it, girl. That was my mom. That's my only parent. And she is my everything. She's my rock. So I was like really scared. And I remember going to the treatment center with her when she was getting her radiation. And I would hold her hand and I would pray for her and just pray that God, I, I told God, I can't handle it. You can't take her because I'll die without her. I, I won't be able to handle it. There's no really right way to cope with it. Um, but here's what I did. I tried to, you know, at first, when I first found out, I never let my mom see that I was upset. I never let her see that it was affecting me because my mom worries about me. Like at the end of the day, I'm her kid. So even when she's sick, she's like, she never wants to be a bother. She never wants to be the cause of somebody's pain, especially her children. So when she, I never, I could never really show her how scared I was because then it would make her freak out and then she would go into mom mode and not care about herself and I needed her to care about herself right what I found worked for me was I would go home and I would allow myself to cry and I allowed myself to cry because if you don't it'll just build up and build up and then you never know when you're gonna explode and you don't want to do that in front of your mom because it's not because you want to keep it from her it's because you want to protect her because she's already going through enough you know a real way to cope with it you just have to let yourself feel whatever it is that you feel you know because cancer is a fucking bitch and it will just completely invade and consume your entire life and you just have to do your best to be as strong as you can just to stay positive that's all like that's all I could do is just stay positive i would be i would legit be the liaison between the doctor and my mother i knew that he was about to come into my mom's room i would step outside and talk to him on my own and hear what he was about to tell my mom because i wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to be too harsh that he wasn't going to that he had enough compassion because some doctors you know they diagnose people all day every day they act like it's not really that big of a deal and they throw around the word cancer and radiation and chemotherapy like nothing so i legit you guys i would stand outside and i would talk to the doctor when he would come over and i'd be like what's going on what are you about to tell my mom like we need to figure figure out a way to tell her in a little bit more of a gentle way because she's going through a lot. So I really did my best to protect my mom and I stayed positive. You know, I would keep her kind of distracted. Um, I would play like games with her. I would brush her hair and braid it while we were watching like Wendy Williams or like we'd watch like our favorite TV show in the hospital and just keeping her positive and her spirit up. Don't worry, everything is gonna be okay. Nothing but positive energy, okay? I wish you the best of luck and you and your mom are in my prayers. Okay, moving on to something a little less sad. Um, this next email is from my girl. She goes by Rebs. Um, her subject line is, I don't know if this is advisable. Well, let's see, girl, cuz you never know. Nikki might have some advice for you. On to what I want to ask. I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel, but I have terrible anxiety and stage fright, and I have very bad self-esteem with the way I look on camera. My friends think it's silly, and so does my parents. I care too much about what people think and people tell me it's stupid to be a YouTuber that I will make a fool out of myself. I want to overcome this but I don't know how. I don't have support from all the people around me but I have some friends who ask why I don't have one already. I don't know if this is advisable but, but I would love it if you could give me some tips to overcome anxiety about it and I know you mentioned you had anxiety before. Thanks so much, love Rebs. I don't think I've ever really talked about like my journey on being on YouTube and you know all of the ups and downs that come along with it because it is unorthodox and it is very different and people love to judge different shit. You know what I'm saying? If you're not going to school to be an attorney or a doctor or a financial advisor, then you're like weird as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I don't 
think I've ever really talked to you guys about like my journey on being on YouTube and like putting yourself out there because I completely understand it. It's very daunting and it's kind of scary. Um, so here's what I can tell you. I can tell you my experience, okay? So when I started YouTube, channel, I, I started it almost to be like a beauty channel. The person that I looked up to a lot were Nicole Guerrero and Carly Bible. And I wanted so badly to, I didn't even fucking care about money, you guys. I just wanted to feel beautiful. And I wanted to teach other girls how to feel beautiful as well. Because like I said, I don't have sisters. I don't have cousins that are around my age. I was here in Denver by myself. And even before then, I was just like really an awkward child. And I felt like nobody understood me. And I felt really ugly all the time. And I just felt really different. I was always different. Um, and as I started coming into my own, I always love to help out other girls that feel the way that I feel because I know that I'm not the only one. So when I joined YouTube, I honestly joined to just be able to help people, to help younger people because it's really hard. Like being an adolescent is so fucking hard. You have emotions that are everywhere. Like you care so much about what other people think for some reason and you just can't fucking help it, right? So here's my story okay so when i first started youtube of course nobody else was doing it none of my friends really knew much about it and i remember david was actually the person that like he would see me watch those beauty videos you guys all the fucking time like i loved nicole guerrero and i loved carly bible and their style and their confidence and i just wanted to be like them right so I started trying to work on my makeup skills and you guys, I worked really, really, really hard and it is a lot of hard work. Um, it took me two full years, you guys, of me not having many people watching my videos. I would spend upwards of four hours editing a video for like 150 views. I'm not even kidding. It was a really, really hard thing to do. Um, David was the one that bought me my first camera. It was like a really small Sony like flip out camcorder. Um, but I did the damn thing and I worked with what I had. When you start a YouTube channel, not everybody understands it. Your parents definitely aren't going to understand it because they're from a different era and they're not from like an era that like technology was the thing, right? The biggest fear was what my friends were gonna think because at the time I had like a big group of friends and I remember you guys that I started doing YouTube videos and I started sharing them on my personal Facebook, which I don't have anymore. Um, and I knew that every single person that I knew in my life was gonna see these videos and they were like poor quality videos. And I had to like get over being embarrassed because this was something that I really, really, really wanted to do. You have to want it more than you care about what other people think about you because I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. I got made fun of a lot. Like I got made fun of and like called stupid. I remember this one kid, he tried to make fun of me and he was like, you're just trying to do what every other bitch is doing on YouTube. Like you ain't nothing special. Like you look real dumb. And it almost like made me quit. But like, it was one of those things where like you just have to keep pushing through it because people are going to think that you're crazy. People are going to think that your shit sucks. People are going to like try to discourage you and like you don't need to be doing that. Don't waste your time on that. Like whatever, whatever. But it really truly has to be a passion. And I, I don't know why. I just kept doing it because <laughs> I felt like this is my space and this is where I found my passion in YouTube and I would come home you guys after working an 8, 9, 10 hour day at an office and I would ride the bus home because my Scion was like all fucked up and I would ride the bus home which was like another hour, hour and a half. I wouldn't get home until like 7, 7.30 at night. And I would, I would come into my room and I would shut the door and I had terrible lighting and I would set up my little camera and I would start recording. And I, I realized that recording and talking on a camera really was kind of therapeutic for me. And I could just be my crazy fucking self. I could just be like crazy fucking Nikki. I can be myself. I don't have to be this professional person like I have to be at work. I don't have to be this person like 
for once I don't have to be the perfect daughter or girlfriend or sister or like employee I can just be myself and it was just one of those things that I fell in love with it you guys and so I fell in love with it to the point that when people like everybody made fun of me I'm not even kidding like I got made fun of so bad like people that were in my life once they saw that I was like doing YouTube and I wasn't getting a whole lot of views. They thought that it was okay to like make fun of me. And they would be like, oh my God, here's the big YouTuber. Oh my God. All I can tell you, babe, is that you have to want it really, really, really bad. Because some people have this weird misconception that you can turn on a camera and then bam, everybody's gonna know you and you're gonna be YouTube famous. But let me tell you something. Unless you come out with a viral video, it's a lot of hard work and in my opinion the harder that you have to work for your dream the more that you appreciate it because now I fucking appreciate it like I go back in my mind I like I can't even I can't even believe it but like I used to do drugstore hauls and like I would go to Walgreens you guys and I would spend my last hundred dollars not on groceries not on anything else I would go in there and I would get a bunch of makeup just for a video and at this time I wasn't making any money on YouTube and I was investing in lighting and cameras and I wasn't sure that I was gonna get anything in return for my investment and sometimes it's really discouraging sometimes it's really slow moving to answer your question um, what I would say is to really ask yourself is this a passion number one you need to ask yourself why do I want to do YouTube what is the purpose of me doing YouTube your answer to that question is really important to the possible success that you have on YouTube if you are trying to do YouTube for the wrong thing you will not make it that far but if you have a true passion and you have a purpose my purpose has always been I want to help the young people that are in this world that felt the way that I felt when I was in high school in a state that was new with no friends, no family, no siblings, no close cousin, nobody. I don't want anybody, if I could, if I can help another girl that felt the way that I felt, oh my God, my life is made because I wish that I would have had somebody like that for me. And I basically, I wanted to start YouTube to be that person that I wish that I had. So that was my genuine reason for starting YouTube. What is your purpose? Why do you want to do YouTube? And once you figure it out, don't take your eyes off of it. You have to want it more than anything. You guys, I used to go without eating. David used to have to come in here and like force me to eat dinner because I would just sit here and film and then right after filming, go straight to my computer and edit all night. Like it was, such a passion for me and I would I would get discouraged and be like god what am I doing this for I'm not even reaching a whole lot of people but even when I was getting a hundred two hundred views there were young people that really needed to hear what I had to say that really got help from my experiences and it just showed me that even on a smaller scale it was worth it so that's what I would say there's not really like a formula for success on YouTube there's not really like a cheat sheet it's honestly a lot of hard work and dedication and self-motivation and no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how tired you are, getting your ass in front of that camera and doing your best and having a purpose and working towards that purpose. So yeah, that's what I would say. You know, every single person that has done great things in this world always had naysayers. And the more people that you have in your life that, that are trying to like make fun of you and say that you're making the wrong decision, every single person that does that to you it should fuel the fire in your ass and it should make you want to do it even more and it should just like spark that passion in you because every single time i got made fun of it got to the point that like when i would get made fun of and people would be like oh my god the youtubers here i ended up being like yep you damn fucking right i got like 120 subscribers bitch yes like i got to the point where i was like you know what i'm proud of what i do not everybody can do it and i'm passionate about it and i know why i'm doing it and i just started being really secure in my decision so if this is in fact something that you really really want to do let it be that don't care about what anybody else thinks or says or their advice you know like it's it's your shit in this life like I said it's all about being happy and doing well and doing good for others so I hope this helps um just don't be listening to the bullshit girl like don't be caring about what other people say because 
it's your life, it's your passion, it's your vision. And this, if you want it bad enough, you can make it happen. So I hope this helps and I wish you the best of luck. You can do anything and everything that you set your mind to. Just make sure that you have a purpose. And once you find that purpose, it'll be so easy to just keep your eyes on that purpose and keep your eyes on the prize and everything else will fall into place. So that is it for today's Ask Nikki, you guys. I know that this Ask Nikki wasn't really relationship oriented, but I feel like so much other shit happens in our life besides relationships, you know, that we need to talk about. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. Also, don't forget to participate in the polls. You can find them on the top right-hand corner of your screen to let your fellow Glamazons know what your thoughts are on their situations. Thank you guys so much for checking this video out. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to hit that huge subscribe button to be notified of each time I upload a new video. I upload advice videos, story time videos, makeup videos, all that jazz. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you're notified of each time I upload a new video and you don't miss out. Also, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media snapchat twitter and instagram i am not about that facebook life i am so sorry but i will leave all of that information down below for you guys thank you guys so much for coming and chilling with your girl and talking about our situations together i love you guys and i will see you guys in my next video peace out